Hello everyone, this is Austin at Bates Nursery. Uh, welcome to our Bates Botanical Boot Camp. We're back here for, I guess, our third week doing this now. I uh, appreciate all y'all watching. Hope you can hear me okay. This is the first time I've ever done this, so bear with me if things go wrong. Um, I guess what we're going to do is I'm going to talk for a little while and then we're going to open up to questions. And uh, if you have questions or want to submit them, submit them to all um, or everybody. And uh, we'll try to, uh, so everybody can see the question and we'll try to answer that way. So, today our topic is on fall veggies, <clears throat> which is great. I love veggies. It is almost getting into the fall. It's about time to start getting these things planted. We brought them into the nursery. We have them here um, already up and ready to go. We have a whole bunch of seed. We're going to get into that later. Um, but, um, like I said, we're ready to go. So, let's talk about cold crops. Um, cool season veggies specifically, we call them cold crops. Now, I want you to don't come in. Th the word I'm using is not cold. We want to say cold because it's, you know, cool weather, but it's technically cold crop. So C-O-L-E is how it's pronounced. Um, this refers to the stem of the plant. It's kind of very old, um, but the stem of these cool weather crops are very significant, and that's what that word refers to. So uh, we call these our cold crops or our cool season veggies. So let's see what are cool season veggies. First up is going to be the plants in the Brassicaceae family. So we generally call them just brassicas. This includes uh, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, kohlrabi, um, Brussels sprouts, kale. Um, all of those are going to be our brassicas. Those are the ones we think of the most while growing um, cool season veggies. So I actually brought some veggies with me here today that we have um, and I'm going to show you that. So um, generally when we're planting cool season veggies, it's all about weather here in Middle Tennessee. So that can fluctuate greatly as y'all know if you've lived here for a while. Um, if we have an early frost or an early freeze, sometimes our veggies don't finish. So there's always, a, a you know, every year's a little bit different. Now we're in the stage where our weather has kind of broken a little bit. At least the nighttime temps um, are starting to drop a little bit. That's kind of whenever we want to think about setting this stuff out. So middle to late August is when we want to get these plants growing. The thing about the cool season crops you need to know is that we've got to get them in the ground when it's warm enough for them to actively grow. We've got to get a plant that's big enough to host um, what we're going to harvest. So um, getting them out with, when, the, when it's you know out of the 90s for sure, we don't want to be into the 90s when we're planting them, but into the 80s is okay, low 80s, 70s are, are ideal, and then with lower nighttime temps down into that 60s and 50s range as we start to move into um, September and then October. Um, so <clears throat> besides that, <clears throat> Uh, like I said, we're going to show you here. I'll show you. This is a broccoli just in a four pack right here. Um, you get four of them. I think they're like $2.29 here at the store. And this is a cool season crop along with all of these. Um, these generally, so I'm going to say uh, when it comes to the, the cool weather crops, when buying them, I like to go, hey, we can do a number of them from seed. I'm going to talk about that soon. But we can buy them already up. And we're going to mainly, we're going to do that with broccoli, do it with cabbage, we're going to do it with cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts. Those are the four big ones that I like to just start as transplants. We readily sell those here all the time. Um, and these are the plants that they are going to produce what we know as Brussels sprouts and, and cabbage and broccoli, those nice tight florets, and the Brussels sprouts um, collect up the stem. Now, another um, very common um, you know, another common fall crops to grow are going to be leafy greens. So we're talking lettuce, we're talking uh, kale, um, talking mustard greens, turnip greens, and collard greens. All those are leafy greens, so a little bit different than the, the other ones I just spoke about where we're actually going to harvest, you know, the vegetable. With the leafy greens, we're just eating the greens. So one thing to note whenever you do plant those is that we can up that nitrogen level in the soil because we are just growing leaves. Nitrogen is responsible for a lot of leaf growth. So when planting your vegetables, say you do it from seed or you do it from transplant, either way, put them in a row and then side dressing next to those plants with a fertilizer that has a little bit more nitrogen in it is going to boost that plant, especially while it's actively growing when it's warm enough outside, to get big leafy greens, which is what we want. When it comes to harvest time on the leafy greens, it doesn't matter all that much. So like I said, you're just eating the leaves. So yeah, we want big, nice leaves, and you will see that if we have a good growing season. Um, but you can harvest the leaves any time of the any time you want to, anytime you just want a salad, you want to add some kale to your salad or something, just go out and pick a few leaves, throw them in your salad, it's totally fine to do that. I actually prefer the smaller leaves, they tend to be more tender. So another thing to note with the leafy greens 
is that those are the plants that we are going to set out from seed. There's no need to buy uh, plants already up. Now, trust me, we do sell them. If you have limited space and you just need four, you know, kale plants or you need four collard greens, that's fine. You can buy it that way. That's no big deal. But if you're trying to do a substantial amount of greens, then we want to do this from seed. Um, this is going to be the kale, the the um, the uh, gosh, I lost my uh, spinach. You can do lettuce. You can do from seed. All very easy. Um, so generally, you're going to overseed at first. So use a lot more seed than what you think. You know, you can always thin out later. If you have too many, um, you can always go in there and pinch some as you're working down the row to get them out of there, so you create more space for other ones. I like to grow my greens really tight on each other. Like I said, I like the smaller, more tender leaves. So I tend to grow them fairly close together so I don't get crazy big leaves. I get a whole bunch of leaves that are tighter and smaller, and that way I can harvest those because I prefer the, the, uh, um, the smaller leaves. So uh, very easy to do from seed when it comes to the leafy greens. Now one thing to note when you're doing dropping seed is that you, uh, you don't want to bury them too deep. All of those seeds that I just mentioned are really, really small. So generally speaking, the smaller the seed, the less you're going to have to bury it. Um, so really, scattering them over top of the soil and then just kind of pressing them in is good practice. And then obviously we're going to water after that. Um, but that's a good way to get a lot more plants and a lot more bang for your buck. Seeds are cheap and you get a whole bunch of them. So that's another thing to note. Now, another um, type of cool season crop that we grow is going to be the root crops. Uh, we are also going to do those from seed. There's no need to buy those. Generally, we don't even sell them up, you know, like radishes or carrots, things like that. Um, generally, they have a pretty low um, days to maturity. I'm going to speak on that in a minute. But these are going to be plants like our turnips or our um, radishes here, and also beets, um, Swiss chard. Swiss chard isn't really a root crop. We think about it as a leafy plant. The funny thing is, is that botanically, Swiss chard and beets are the exact same plant. Um, same genus, same species. So the beet is bred to have the root down below. The Swiss chard is bred for the leaves to be very pretty. It's attractive in mixed containers if you want to use it that way, but also it's good flavor as well. <clears throat> so those are some more of the root crop. Oh, also carrots. I didn't mention we got some carrots. Uh, you can get those in. Not This one's a kind of a long day to maturity. I think this one's about 70, but you can generally say about 50, uh, 55 days on carrots for the most part. Now, that's another thing I want to speak of, and that is days to maturity. So for the most part, like I said, leafy greens, you don't have to worry too much about how long they're going to, how long they need to mature because we're not actually, we're only harvesting leaves. Now, when you're talking about broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, they have a days to maturity and it's generally going to be in that 55 to even up to 85 to 90 days with some varieties of cabbage. Now, this can pose an issue here in Middle Tennessee because, you know, we don't have that much time before we start getting a freeze. A lot of these cold crops can handle a frost or even a light, you know, a light frost or even a little bit heavy down into that 30 degrees. Uh, they can handle things like that. Once you start dipping into like really cold though, like freeze, freeze, way below, you know, below 30 even, these things are just going to kick off. So we need to, as we start getting later in the season and we're starting to get cooler and cooler, um, we need to start keeping an eye on the weather a little bit actually because if you have a whole row of the broccoli that's already starting to form and head up, and then we get a nasty freeze to come in there, that's really gonna take that crop way back. I mean, it'll turn them brown pretty badly. So what you would wanna do in that case is, go if you know we're having a bad freeze and you don't have any way to cover, go ahead and harvest your crop even though it is small. And that's just kinda of what you have to live with here. That's, that's just our weather. Now, I mentioned covering. If you can cover on those really cold nights, uh, that's good practice as well. Even if we're seeing a freeze, you'll, you know, you'll see a little bit of, uh, or a frost, I mean. If you see a little bit of, you will see some damage on the plants even with a frost. Usually not enough to kill the plant or anything, but you will see some damage. If you want to avoid that, you can go out there and cover using, you know, sheets, uh, getting them up off. Um, people, you can even like high house, uh, so you can use like PVC tunnels to grow if you're getting into it that much. And you can put plastic over top, make a little hoop house type of thing. Don't do that yet when the warm temperatures are still here. We want to avoid that because we don't want to heat it up any more than it already is outside. But if you want to grow under a tunnel, that's good practice as well to keep that frost off of these leaves. <clears throat> so, like I said, for the most part, the cabbage is going to be the longest to, um, to finish up in the season. But we generally have enough time here to grow a successful vegetable garden. It's just that we need to watch uh, as we start getting to, a, you know, to our frost dates. We need to start watching that and uh, making sure, you know, checking on, on, the, on the frost. 
So, thing to know. All right. Another thing I wanted to mention while I was here, which we don't really think of herbs as coal crops necessarily. They're not really, but it's never a bad idea to go ahead and get some herbs out this time of year. Most of the time, this time of year, say our basil, it's probably already bolted and went to seed or starting to look rough. Cilantro for sure has already gone to seed and it's played out. So I brought some herbs in here just to show y'all. We got some thyme, um, some oregano, some parsley, some mint. One thing you need to know about mint is probably do not put it in the ground. It's highly aggressive. Um, it'll probably take over your garden. So be careful with the mint, just leave it in a pot. Um, but cilantro, I've found that cilantro is one of the best fall crops because it just holds on to the foliage a lot longer than you think and it doesn't bolt like it does in the summertime. So I even brought basil out here. Basil is probably the first thing to kick off at the very first frost. Don't worry about it, there's nothing you can do about it. The frost takes it immediately. But we have basil right now, so it's a short lived, you know, it's a short crop as well. You can always harvest leaves. Getting them in in a fall garden is a good idea as well. <clears throat> All right, I brought some packet of seed in here. Um, I wanted to just show you nothing fancy on this, but just when you are looking at a seed packets, it's going to tell you the days to maturity. Um, it says it right on the front, so be mindful of that. Take a look at it and uh, you know see which crops are your fastest and which are your slowest. Um, lettuce specifically is one that I love you know the most. Um, it's just fantastic. If you've never grown lettuce, you've got to try it. It's way better than anything you buy in the store. <coughs> it uh, it's easy to pop up from seed, and they can take it very cold. That's the one thing I wanted to note about lettuce. Is you can grow lettuce far into the season just by putting it out and then, I mean, seriously, like frost won't even touch lettuce usually. It'll perk right back up. Um, it's a good one to just put in mass. You can grow these in containers. It makes a beautiful container. Just take a round bowl and then fill it up with seeds, watch them all germinate, and watch them just make this beautiful bowl of lettuce. And you can harvest that for your salad. So lettuce is a fun one to grow. Romaine's probably my favorite, but that's just, you know, me. The, the bibs are very popular. I brought even a red one in here today. You can see this creates very a loose head. It's not really tight like an iceberg. A little bit more loose, a little bit more leafy. This one's called Red Sails. Um, it makes for a pretty container as well. <clears throat> Speaking of containers, I know I'm going to get asked probably if you can grow this stuff in containers. Answer is yes, um, especially with the seed stuff. Like I was just saying about the lettuce, the same can be done in containers with all of your leafy greens. So, you know, get all your pots ready, prep your soil, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and you're going to drop all your seeds on top, you know, press them in, water them. And then you're going to get this full pot of all of these beautiful leafy greens. Even mix them up. You know, throwing Swiss chard in with other greens is just a really attractive look for a, for a mixed container, but also an edible mixed container, which is, you know, a great idea. So don't go with pots that are too small. We do want to have some room in there. Uh, the more, the better. So um, container gardening is, is totally fine. Now, when it comes to, say, broccoli, the actual brassicas, uh, you want to probably put just one of them per container. We don't really want to crowd them out. They need some space. Broccoli can get very large in a season. Cauliflower and cabbage both can as well. If you've ever grown them, you've seen that. Um, so we want to get, you know, probably not much smaller than like a five gallon, five gallon bucket is probably overkill for a broccoli. You can go smaller than that. Um, but you don't want to go too, too small. Give them some room to grow, but you want to grow them just in the center of the pot, one individual plant per, per container. Um, Another thing that I'm sure y'all are doing <clears throat> that a lot of people are doing now is raised bed gardening, um, which is a fantastic thing to do if you have limited amount of space. So, um, you know, prepping your garden, let's start there. Um, you've probably, if you've got a raised bed already, I'm sure you've already grown your spring and summer crops in it. Those crops are probably starting to get a little tired by now. I don't know that. You may still have tomatoes coming on. Uh, some people still do, but they usually look a little ratty. So. What we want to do is give it a general cleanup first off. We want to get our old stuff out of there whenever we're actually ready to plant, get the old stuff out of there. Try to clean up as much like leaf debris and leaf litter that's left on top of the soil. Um, sometimes that can host pathogens that we don't really want to incorporate into, into that. So let's kind of scrape back that top layer of your soil in the bed. And then if you need to add some compost, I recommend doing that. These are some, some you know plants that have, you know, they're kind of heavy feeders a little bit. So. Uh, we want to get something back in there. A product that we sell here that's our compost material is called Supernatural. Um, and it's an organic compost that we make here ourselves. It's an earth mix product. 
it's a thing to just put on top, you know, just, you don't even need much, just, a, you know, two or three inches on top of your soil, work it in a little bit to the first couple inches, and then you'll be ready for planting. That'll really help with the nutrient activity, getting down into that soil zone, into that root zone, which is what we want. Um, if you want to use synthetics, like I said, that's fine too. You can side dress with, with synthetic fertilizers right next to the plant, just along each side of it, um, especially with the leafy stuff. That'll get them up and growing, uh, you know, which is what we want. Um, if you are just starting a raised bed for the first time this fall and you don't have any soil at all, I brought in this other bag in here sitting next to me that we call Landscape. Um, it is technically a soil conditioner, so a lot of people use it when they're planting trees or shrubs to add into the hole with it for added drainage or to mix in with our heavy clays. It's an excellent product for that. I've found that it's an extremely good product for container gardening as well. I use this for all of my containers that I use. I grow annual flowers like crazy every year, and this has been the product I've found is our best for that. So, if you're filling a raised bed, I would recommend coming in and getting our landscape and it's a light mix, it's got pine fines in it, it's got no soil at all, so <clears throat> that's what the Supernatural is going to do, that actually has a little topsoil in it, um, so that's going to, you know, head, you know, get some more water uh, holding in there, but this is a good start because we don't water, we don't want water just sitting around the root zone all the time, we want it to drain, and this is going to help with that. We sell this here at Bates uh, by the scoop if you're filling up a whole thing, or we sell it by bags for sure. Okay, so We've learned about some cold crops. Now, I have to mention this because it is going to be an issue. Uh, maybe not for everybody, but certainly for most of you. And it is a very common insect pest that attacks the brassica family of plants. And it is called the imported cabbage worm. This is a green worm. It's about yay long, and they don't get all that big, and they don't get all that fat either. They're kind of a linear um, worm. It starts, the, the process starts as a little white moth, or butterfly actually, that's really kind of pretty. They just flutter around all the time. Some of them have, uh, you know, little black dots on the wings. They'll be fluttering around. Like I said, you'll think they're pretty, but what they're actually doing is just searching. Their, their primary host is the brassica family. So they are searching for those leaves, and what they're doing is going to those, and they are laying eggs all over these plants. So it's a little... When, when um, scouting, we call scouting is whenever we're going out and looking at our garden and we're looking for insect activity or pathogen activity. We call that scouting. So when you're out scouting your, your plants whenever they're young specifically, you want to make sure you turn the back sides of the leaves over and you look, you know, and just kind of look around at them and see if you're seeing little, there's these little yellow eggs that are almost um, egg shaped actually. They kind of look like that and they're just plucked on the back side of a leaf. Um, these, the imported cabbage worm is kind of sporadic, it's not like an egg mass, um, so they're not all clustered in the same area, it's kind of a little bit sporadic, they just kind of dot them as they work through your garden. The best prevention is to squash those eggs when you see them, um, that's the first mode of action. Now, you're not going to find every egg, trust me, nobody's got time for that. So, <clears throat> you're going to have some of these worms emerge, and when they do, they're very small and green, kind of light green at first actually, they blend into the plant extremely well. They are very, very camouflaged. They get more evident as they get older, um, and you can visibly, just because they're bigger, you can see them better. But when they're young, they're kind of hard to spot. They immediately start feeding on leaves, and they don't stop until they get big. And it's a nasty insect pest, I'm not going to lie. I brought in a little example here of some kale that we had at the nursery that came in the other day with a little bit of damage. Hoping you can see this here. There's going to be, see the holes on it? They're really, you know, chewed up. <clears throat> that is the imported cabbage worm making this mess. So this is kind of the first start. You need to watch this. They can do a lot of damage on young plants. Now, as the plant ages and gets a lot bigger, a little bit of holes here and there are not a big deal. You'll see that, especially when growing kale. Um, it's not that big of a deal to have some holes in the leaves. But with a young plant like this, when you just set them out, if they go to town for a day or two and you don't notice those worms, they can take a whole plant that's, you know, small like this. So, uh, we need to keep an eye on it when they're young, specifically. Now, there are ways to combat this worm. Um, like I said, picking them off and scouting is, is definitely your best and most organic method when, when doing this. There are organic sprays you can spray. There's a product called BT, which is just like a Bacillus thuringiensis. Um, we sell that here as well. It's very effective at killing worms. You spray that on the plant. It is organic. It's not going to hurt you at all. Uh, and there's also synthetics out there that are fine. What I want you to avoid is spraying synthetics on leafy greens 
mainly because you're eating those leaves. So, you know, those chemicals are not organic by any means. They're actually chemicals, and they're good at killing insects, don't get me wrong. But I don't personally like to eat leaves that has been sprayed with something synthetic. So you may avoid that. The other brassicas can handle it a little bit better because you're going to harvest those so much later into the season. If you... Uh, oh. We have a question coming in. Does rinsing the worms off with water work? It does, but, I mean, it'll work for a minute. It'll knock them off the plant, but you're going to have to, you know, kill them. So, yeah, I mean, that's better for, like, really, really small insects that can't find their way back. But um, if you don't want to actually kill the worm with the spray of water, then it's not all that effective, but it will knock them off the plant. Um, another thing we need to note is that if you don't take care of this problem early and if you have them, what happens is is that you'll start to see heads form on cauliflower and broccoli specifically. <clears throat> they will actually get in the heads and they will destroy your crop. It's not even just about you know chewing up leaves. That, that looks unsightly, but that's not all that big of a deal. But when you start getting those worms down into the, the florets of that broccoli, they will do a number of damage. And you know we, we don't want that to happen, so we need to avoid that. So catching this stuff early is really what you need to do. Oh, looks like we got another question here. Yeah, um, are there herbs or any other plants that repel them? I have heard, what was it? I think it's uh, something that they really hate. I want to say it's thyme. I'll have to look that back up. But I want to say that thyme, which I brought some of that in here. This is an English thyme. I did read that as a home remedy, I think, as a natural deterrent of those. So placing thyme maybe around the, the plants. I'm not telling you it's going to be exactly 100% effective, but I'd say it couldn't hurt. Someone's obviously had luck with that before. So, And it's just another way to get thyme in the garden. It's a perennial herb. It's going to come back for you. So... That's a good one, you know, that, that's what I've heard. <clears throat> There's also another insect pest I should probably mention. It is another cabbage worm. It's called the cross-striped cabbage worm. It's another one. It does the exact same damage pretty much as the imported cabbage worm, which does the most damage. It's a much different looking worm. It's got a lot, it's actually a pretty worm. It's got, it's prettier colors. It's got two stripes right down its kind of rib area, and then it's kind of greenish with some brownish mixed in there. And they're much smaller than cabbage worms. And they're a little bit easier to spot at the, when, you, when you are scouting because they actually create an egg mass. So the adult moths will come in and they will lay eggs the same way that the other cabbage you know, moths do. But they put them all in a, in a cluster, an egg cluster is what we call that. So if you ever see a cluster of, they're white actually, white pretty round eggs. In a cluster on the back sides of the leaves, take your thumb, rub those right off and just squash them and just nip it in the bud immediately because they're a pretty nasty little insect as well. They do it's almost the same amount of damage as, um, as the cabbage worms do. Um, there's another one that's called the cabbage looper, I should mention. A looper, ju that just means it doesn't crawl, it loops. It's like an inchworm. It, go it goes kind of that way. Um, it's another one that can be bad, but honestly, it doesn't really matter which worm you get. You just need to make sure you, you know, get rid of it before it gets out of hand. So, I think I've covered a lot of things here. Um, we had a question about neem. Uh, can you eat cabbage after it's been lightly touched by neem? Yes. Okay. Yeah, simple as that. Neem's not that, neem's totally organic. It's not going to hurt us hardly at all, especially if it's just been lightly touched. I mean, I wouldn't go drinking the stuff, but, um, you know, if you put it on a little bit of cabbage, it's not a big deal. It'd be fine. Okay. Um, and do you want to take <coughs> questions via chat? Yeah, let's do that. So I think I'm good. I've talked enough. Um, we're going to take some questions now. Whatever you got, throw it at me. Mitch. Can you plant onions this time of year? <clears throat> if you just want kind of fresh spring onions, yes, you can. Do not ever expect those onions to fully swell up and get to be big old onions before it gets cold. Um, but yes, they will start growing a little bit. If you just want to munch on them, dip them in ranch, put them in a veggie plate, things like that, yeah. But they're going to be very small. Usually you barely ever even see onions this time of year. So I don't know where you'd get them. We don't even sell them this time of year, I don't think. We sell them as bulbs. Um, sometimes but it's okay just don't expect full-size onions we're going to do that in the early spring and you can set them out early early spring that's totally fine and you can actually finish up and get a crop that's finished onions take a long time to totally finish um, so not ideal for this time of year but you can get some spring onions just the small ones 
Um, suggestions for first time growers of Brussels sprouts. Suggestions on just yeah. doing it? Yep. Um, well, there's only a couple varieties we sell. Both are fine here. Um, Brussels sprouts are a funny little plant, actually. They send up a stem. So they look just like broccoli or, cab or cauliflower for the most part, but their stem gets elongated and it gets kind of, it'll get up there pretty tall and they'll have horizontal sh leaves that go. So you have the main stem and you got the leaf right here. The Brussels sprout is actually made in that crotch angle right there, in between that spot. That's where you're going to see the little Brussels sprouts. And they, they work themselves all the way up the stem. We end up, once you cut those, like growers, they call them ropes. They just look like long ropes with Brussels sprouts attached to them. Uh, they can get very large, so they generally don't hear. So don't expect that. You know, Michigan grows some fantastic Brussels sprouts up north. They'll be, gosh, you can get Brussels sprouts that big. They're really, really big. They do not get that big here. Do not expect it. Uh, we don't have long enough, a long enough time for them to get big enough before it gets too cold. So just know that if Brussels sprouts are still fantastic when they're small, it's not that big of a deal. So if you only get Brussels that are, you know, about that big, uh, just go ahead and harvest them before danger of freeze, and you'll have a nice crop. Are there certain fall, vet, fall season veggies that should not be planted near each other? Not that I know of. I've never really done that <clears throat> um, per se. You know, it's no, not really. I've always lined them up, you know, just in rows out in the, out in the garden. So uh, not that I know of. Um, so I, you know, put them all together. And when it comes to timing of planting, should we pay attention to air temp or soil temp or number of days? Uh, when do most of these get planted here? Here about now, honestly. It's it's getting time. And soil temp um, is actually a good thing that it's the soil temperature is warm. It's more air temp that we're talking about. Um, we don't want those days up into the 90s still. We want to avoid that. And night temps are a really big deal as well. And I'm talking about overall air temps. The night temperatures, once those start to drop, that's whenever cold crops really start to push and do well. But yeah, generally from mid to late August, depending on the weather, is whenever we want to get them planted. And then our general frost date here is around Halloween usually, sometimes earlier, sometimes after. That's when I was saying earlier, we just kind of have to watch the weather as we start getting into those those later months and our, and our veggies. We need to keep an eye on them and make sure you know we, they don't get touched whenever you're wanting to harvest. Um, and what are the best veggies for part shade? Best veggies for part shade wonder how much shade you're talking. Most of all of these herbs, I mean, most of all of these veggies are going to prefer a full sun site. So generally we only, you know, term full sun as four to six hours throughout the day. So as long as they're getting that, you're going to have a good crop. Now, if you're getting down into that three hour range, you're probably not going to get really beefy plants. Um, they'll live, you know, a sun plant can live in the shade. It just lives a little bit differently. It grows smaller, it grows leggier even. Um, they can live, but they're not going to get as, as big as what you would want them to get. So the big leafy stuff, they won't get as big, but they'll still live. Spinach is okay in a uh, uh, semi-shade environment. Carrots can take it okay. But generally, we want to try to get them as much sun as we can. Um, if you had a summer garden, how do you prepare soil for planting for fall? after you've pulled up things like cucumbers? Um, really just a general cleanup. Like I was saying earlier, any old leaves that have spots on them or stuff like, you know, we don't really want to keep debris in the bed. So the first step is to, to remove all that debris, get it back clean again, get it back pretty. And then we're going to add our organic material. Like I said, our Supernatural here is our compost blend. You know, work that back in because there's been some nutrients that's been depleted because of those summer crops. So we want to go back in and add it, you know, to the soil. So. Um, not much, just clean it up and get the, you know, get some nutrient back in it and then we're ready to plant. <clears throat> Are the butterflies that turn into the cabbage worms and other pests considered pollinators? <clears throat> no, not that I know of, probably. I mean, yeah, they're, they're, when they mature and they become a butterfly, yeah, that's what they're after. Uh, but they're also after reproducing and that's their biggest thing and that's this time of year. You know, as we start getting into later in the fall, a lot of the flowering plants are not flowering anymore. So, um, you know, we, this is in, when I say imported cabbage worm, that's because that's what it is. It's been imported. This is a non-native to our area. So if you're trying to protect the natural pollinators that we have here, I understand that. I get it. I'm all about it. But this is not, this is an invasive, uh, you know, butterfly. So getting rid of them, I don't think is a bad idea. But yeah, they are technically pollinating some plants out there. But like I said, it's minimal as the fall goes on. They just don't actually have the flowers to keep doing that. So 
And uh, don't be worried so much about that. Um, and we have more Brussels sprouts questions. Uh, are there any minerals to add so, to Brussels sprouts so that they don't turn out like hard broccoli heads? Like hard broccoli heads? Uh, yep. Um, <clears throat> minerals, not that I know of. <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm struggling with this one, like tiny broccoli heads. Maybe you're referring to them going to flour, maybe? Because, no, I'm not sure on that one. I mean, generally Brussels, like I said, the only issue we have with them here is that they just don't get full size. I mean, they, I, I don't know of any minerals or anything you can add that's going to change that. I, you know, <clears throat> every year's different, though, so I don't know. If you had, didn't have luck with them, try them again um, and see how it goes. Um, and then also for Brussels sprouts, how many plants can be put into one square foot of a raised bed? Probably just one. I hate to say it. You could probably cram three in there. You're going to keep the plants smaller if you do that. But really, as I say, if you're doing square foot gardening, it's recommended usually just one Brussels sprout because the Brussels, the cabbage, and the broccoli, and the cauliflower can get pretty large for you. So probably just one per square foot. Um, and what is the latest you have to have seeds in the ground? Is early September too late? No, it's not too late early, early September, especially if you're doing things like uh, lettuce. Lettuce germinates in like two days at a temperature of a soil temperature of 75 degrees. So it's a very quick one to sprout. We still have those days in September. Totally fine. I'd recommend you go ahead and probably get some stuff out from seed because you know they obviously have to germinate. There's that timing. So probably want to go ahead and get our seeds dropped. It's, it, it's time to go. Um, and then if you had issues with cucumber beetles, once the plant is ripped out, uh, do they taint the soil as well? Do they taint the soil? No. Yeah. No. no, but most beetles are going to be um, grubs. You know in the soil so if they're you know if you see them this year no it's guys i'm gonna go ahead and tell you cucumber beetle is here it's going to be here every single year it's not going to affect your soil cucumber beetle is not a real host insect of the cool season crops they may nibble a little bit but they don't do significant damage so no but do know yeah if you have larvae that stays in the soil and over winters you're going to see cucumber beetle next year but like i said that is a battle you're probably not going to win cucumber beetles are hugely abundant here um, and you're going to have, you know, you're going to see it probably every year. Um, is it too late to start anything from seed indoors, or should we just buy transplants for brassicas? Buy transplants from brassicas for the brassicas right now. When it comes to the leafy greens, let's do that from seed. It's not too late, and you don't have to start them inside. You go ahead and put them direct sow right into your garden. I mean, you do not have to, you, you drop these seeds, you, trust me, you're going to see them sprout very, very quickly, within a couple weeks even, uh, probably even before that, more like seven days. Um, so no, it's not too late. Yeah, y'all don't even fool with doing it in, indoors. You just get them out into the garden and, and roll with it. All right, and we have someone who just got their raised planters. Are they too late to plant anything? And if not, what do you suggest? Well, everything we talked about <laughs> uh, previously, yeah, no, you're not too late. It's 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 time to go. It's it's actually some people would even claim that that it's too early. I disagree with that. I think our weather has changed enough at night to where it's fine to get this stuff out. So any of the brassicas, any of the leafy stuff, any of the root crops, um, come out here and talk with us. I will get you anything you need to plant in that raised bed. Let's get it going. All right, that's all the questions I'm seeing for now. Okay. Um, you can see if anyone has. Any additional ones? That looks like it. Looks like it. Okay. Yep. Well, guys, I really appreciate y'all watching us. This has been fun for us to try to figure this out and uh, help y'all out, get your stuff growing. Um, come down and see us here at Bates. We're here all the time. We got specialized guys that can help you out, um, get you what you need. So it's time for fall crops. Let's get them. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. <clears throat>